It's now my uh, pleasure to welcome to the podium a four-time shuttle astronaut, a member of the Astronaut Hall of Fame, our NASA Administrator and my friend, Charlie Bolton. Thank you all very much. Um, stay focused. You're going to hear me say that a couple of times. That's not my script, but stay focused. Bob, I want to thank you very much for hosting this gala and uh, allowing me to be down here. It's always great to be back with uh, members of the Space Shuttle program and, and to celebrate the extraordinary success that we've seen through the years. In addition to my friend Bob Cabana, who was flying shuttle missions during the that's it sounds funny to say this, during the same era as I, <laughs> we have another astronaut from that time you may have heard of, Bob Crippen, who honors us with his presence here. S1 with John Young and then he flew three other shuttle missions before coming back here to actually run the Kennedy Space Center for a while. Also joining us is Janet Cavandi, the Director of Flight Crew Operations. <laughs> Janet's a current astronaut and she's flown three times and is helping us oversee the phase out of the shuttle program. So we have the full spectrum of shuttle astronauts here with us today covering the program's history. Stay focused. And it's wonderful that this date dovetails with the 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's courageous flight when he became the first human to reach, to reach space. I want to thank each and every one of you and the many others in the shuttle workforce over the years for your significant contribution to this tremendous American accomplishment. You've inspired a generation, helped make the world a better place, and given us a roadmap for future space exploration. You should take pride in that. Today belongs not just to the hundreds of men and women who have flown on the shuttle, but to all of you who have helped these missions to succeed. Those of us who have flown on the shuttle put our lives in your hands each time we flew. And I never doubted that all of you on the ground in launch and mission control, in orbiter processing, in every phase of the program were absolutely dedicated and among the most skilled and committed people I've ever known. Your ability to troubleshoot and solve problems quickly, has salvaged many a launch, and also helped keep astronauts safe in space. Whenever a problem arises with a shuttle, we always see a huge amount of innovative thinking by the team to identify and correct the issue. New tests are devised to isolate and identify the problem. New hardware is made both for the testing and to install on the vehicle. And new procedures and processes are developed to test and check out the fix. The engineers and managers frequently collaborate, both within NASA and across the government and academia, to bring in systems experts to help identify the root cause of the problem and quickly converge on a solution. Over the past 30 years, our shuttle team has demonstrated a tremendous degree of innovative thinking in solving problems, whether in flight or on the ground. The recent issue of the external tank stringer cracks is an excellent example of the very thorny problem that was successfully solved in innovative thinking, perseverance, and engineering discipline. Your ingenuity and innovation are second to none. You, you, you truly are problem solvers and solution creators. I've been proud and amazed many, many times, and just not during the past nearly two years I've been the administrator. The shuttle has provided this nation with many firsts, with many proud moments and it has helped the United States to lead the world in space exploration. I was fortunate enough to be a part of two of its historic achievements, the deployment of STS-31 on STS-31 of the Hubble Space Telescope, and the first Russian-U.S. shuttle mission, STS-60, which presaged the unprecedented international cooperation we've achieved since on the International Space Station. I was privileged to fly aboard Columbia, Discovery, and Atlantis, there's no more awe-inspiring or humbling experience than flying to space. With seven million pounds of thrust beneath you, you're aware of your frailty as a human being and also the great things which we are capable. My experience as commander of STS-60, the first flight of a Russian cosmonaut on the shuttle, taught me that there's no limit to what we, what we can accomplish in our international partnerships 
when we set common goals among diverse, sometimes discordant nations and set our minds to achievement of those goals. Over three decades, this flagship program has become part of the fabric of our nation's history. It's helped us improve communications on Earth and to understand our home planet better. It set scientific satellites like Magellan and Ulysses speeding on their missions into the solar system and launched Hubble and Chandra to explore the universe. The shuttle program has given us tremendous knowledge about a reusable spacecraft and launch system from which future government and commercial systems will benefit. It's enabled construction of the International Space Station, our anchor for future human exploration, which is leading to breakthroughs in human health and microgravity research. And it's provided, as Bob said, first ever astronaut flight and command opportunities for women and minorities. We'll never forget the crews of Challenger and Columbia. Many, many of us here today counted them as our personal friends and their sacrifice and achievements will live on in the spirit of perseverance and grit and hope in which they lived and worked. They were all They were all true American heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice and service to this country. The shuttle's retirement is bittersweet for all of us, but at NASA, we're also very excited about our future, a future that is bright and open to us because of the shuttle program. We could not be reaching for new heights and developing the next generation of capabilities without the technological breakthroughs of the shuttle and the many lessons learned that we will carry forward. Our commitment to human spaceflight is steadfast. We will continue to lead the world in human exploration and discovery. And don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Our human spaceflight program continues with astronauts living and working on the International Space Station, where we have lived and worked for over 10 years now and will continue to do so for at least another decade. Of course, we wouldn't have been able to build that orbiting outpost without the shuttle. We wouldn't have established that model of global cooperation that will serve us well into the future as a guidepost for how we work and how we can work together as an international community toward the greater things of which we are capable as human beings. With the last flight of Atlantis in June, the shuttle era will come to an end. But they won't stop inspiring and they won't stop being a part of the fabric of America. Its significance as one of the most amazing technological marvels of all time will become even more evident after we no longer have it as our premier vehicle for transportation of crew and cargo to low Earth orbit. Each shuttle has stories to be told, history to be shared. We intend to tell their stories and share that history with as many people as we can over the coming years and decades. Today, I'm proud to announce where these national treasures will be displayed and enjoyed by millions of Americans once the shuttle program concludes. First, here at the Kennedy Space Center, where every shuttle mission and so many other historic... does for you, you have no idea what that applause did for me. It's been a rough day. First, here at the Kennedy Space Center, where every shuttle mission and so many other historic human space flights have originated, we'll showcase my, showcase my old friend Atlantis. Not only will the workers who sent it into space so many times have a chance to still see it. The millions of visitors who come here every year to learn more about space and to be a part of the excitement of exploration <laughs> to be a part of the excitement of exploration will be able to see 
what is still a great rarity, an actual flown space vehicle. The California Science Center in Los Angeles, only a few miles from the site of the old Rockwell plant, where the shuttle was developed and from where its construction was managed, will be the new home of the shuttle on the launch pad, preparing its final mission in Denver. The Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center in Virginia, will get Discovery, our most traveled orbit. And New York City's intrepid Sea Air and Space Museum, on whose flight deck Mercury and Gemini modules and flight crews will return to us after splashdown from their historic space missions, will get Enterprise, our prototype orbiter that tested the aerodynamics of the craft There were many, many worthy institutions that requested an orbiter, and only four to go around. Many of the applicant institutions who did not receive an orbiter will receive significant shuttle hardware and artifacts to help bring to life this dynamic chapter of our nation's space exploration history for their many visitors. People from across our nation and around the world will continue to learn from these amazing vehicles and the stories of their crews and their missions. The shuttles will inspire many people who are now just in school to become the next generation of ex exploration leaders and millions more who are just proud and passionate about our space program will also now have a chance to see a space shuttle in person. I want to congratulate all of these fine institutions and wish them many visitors and exciting programs with the space shuttle fleet. For all of them, take good care of our vehicles. They've served the nation well and we at NASA have a deep and abiding relationship and love affair with them that's hard to put into words. Now, we're going to look ahead to Endeavor's final mission into space, STS-134. Thank you all again for your service and support to this amazing program and to these amazing flying machines. And thank all of you for your dedicated service to our great nation. Stay focused. As I look at Mike Moses and I look around at the others of you, he's going to remind us over the coming days, stay focused. We've got two more flights to do so that we can safely fly out the shuttle. Stay focused. You've done an incredible job. You should feel incredibly proud. I know I do. May God bless all of you and your families, and may God bless the United States of America.